Today's video is a tutorial about how to nest two functions in Microsoft Excel, specifically text functions called left and find. You're going to find that this is a very powerful combination for being able to take two pieces of text and break them apart. The left function is a text function. If you go up to the formulas tab at the top of the screen, you'll find it in the category called text. And left basically says, go to whatever the text is and start from the left side. Uh, as you can imagine, if there's a function that allows you to start from the left, there's also a function that starts from the right, which is called right. And the left function, what it does is it says, okay, we're going to start from the left side and we're going to go in a certain amount. So the first part is that it is the left function starting from the left hand side. The second piece is the first argument. What text are we pulling this from? So usually this is a reference to a cell, you know, go to cell A1 or something like that. Then we get to how is it that we're going to do our job. So we're going to cell A1 and we're starting from the left hand side and we're going to return some text, but how much of that text do we want? So we could tell it, uh, grab me three characters or five characters, things like that. So this is the situation we find ourselves in with this table here. If we want to grab Seth Forsythe's last name, we could say start from the left side of the content and go in a certain amount. So we use equal sign left as the function. Again, the first argument for this function is where is the text? It's in cell A1. And now here's where it gets interesting because after we tell it to go to cell A1 and start from the left hand side, you start to look into your future a second. Okay, so we need to know how many characters you want. Now if we were to type in that we wanted seven characters, we would be able to get Seth Forth Forsyth's last name. But what about Jeremy Hofstadter? What about Joan Meza? What about Jerome Wiley? These people don't have seven character last names. So in this situation, what we do is we nest a function into the left function, and specifically the function we're looking for is called find. The find function has, again, three pieces. It starts off with the fact that it is called find. It is in the uh, text drop-down menu on the formulas tab, just like the left function is. And the first part is really where the important stuff is. Here we have, what is it that you're trying to find me? In our previous example here, you saw Forsyth, comma, and then whatever the person's first name was. What we're going to do here is we're going to say, I want you to stop at where the comma is. So the character defined is going to be the comma in this. So we start from the left-hand side and we go in until we find the comma. The second part should be relatively obvious. It's just where is that comma going to be? It's, it's going to be in the uh, cell A1. So let's see that in action here. We have uh, start from the left of Seth Forsyth's name, go to cell A1, which is Seth Forsyth, and grab a certain number of characters. How many characters? Well, I need you to use the find function to figure it out. Use the find function and find me where the comma is. Wherever the comma is, that's the end of this person's last name. And, of course, their name is in cell A1. Now the problem, of course, here is that the comma, if it's included, is too far, right? We want Forsyth. We don't want Forsyth comma. We don't want Benvenuto comma. We just want Littles and Albright and all the rest of them. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab not Forsyth comma, but we're going to subtract one, which allows us to stop at the H in Forsyth. So finding the comma would go eight positions, subtracting one would go seven positions. All right, let's put this into action. Uh, we start off again with the left function, equal sign left. It takes two arguments. The first of those is simply where is the text that we're referring to? That's in cell A1. But then the second argument asks us how many characters we want. And again, if we typed in seven for Seth Forsyth's last name, well then as we move down to Jeremy Hofstadter and Joan Meza, we would definitely have the wrong number of characters for each of those people. So what we do here is we use the find function in order to calculate that it's seven characters for Seth Forsyth's last name.
The find function takes three arguments, but only two of them are required, and those are the two that we're going to be using. The first of those arguments is what are we looking for? So in our situation, uh, when we look at the content that's in cell A1, A2, we recognize that the thing we're looking for is the comma. The comma is the thing that tells us where the person's last name ends and where the person's first name begins. So in order to tell it that we're looking for the comma, we put the comma in quotation marks, like so. And again, any kind of text that we're looking for, whether it's a space, a comma, a period, a dash, what have you, um, you always put it in quotation marks. Now, after the next comma, what we do is we tell it where the text happens to be. Again, the text is in cell A1. And we close the parentheses off and we're almost home, but the problem is that this is actually going to tell us that there are eight characters all the way up to and including the comma. And we don't want it to be eight characters because Seth Forsyth's last name actually includes seven characters. So for it to become seven instead of eight, we just do a little minus one. We clean that up a little bit, make sure that we stop short of the comma instead of including the comma. Close parentheses off and let's see whether it works. Woohoo! Success on our part. We autofill down and as you can see it successfully stops short of the comma, allowing us to see the person's last name but not any other part of the text. That's it. Good luck everybody!